God is in the midst. 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 My sister Alicia, they both just recently got saved. They got kicked out of the boat in the kingdom, and now they're worshiping the Lord. Amen. Look at what God has done in your life. You came, you gave your life to the Lord, you got married, amen, you're pushing forward. God is in the midst. That's how you know that God is in the midst. The greatest, the greatest sign of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a transformed life. The greatest sign that God is in the midst is somebody that was and they're not anymore. Somebody that used to do and they don't do. Somebody that used to say and now they say. That's what we're doing in this church and we're doing it for the Lord. We're turning from our wicked ways and this is what happens. Amen. We're going to go into the, the message for tonight. This is not only our brother in Christ, but a lot of the things that you see happening in the church structural wise, uh, please be seated, come from the gift of the fellowship that God has given me with this man of God. I want to thank God for the network of the kingdom. The blood of Jesus is the greatest social network ever accessible to us. Tonight, we're going to go into a moment where we're going to just listen to what God has to say through the vessel. I was in the kitchen making a coffee and the Lord said to me, just my word alone heals people. Just the word of God being released. Just the word of God being released heals people. That's how powerful the word of God is. That's how powerful it is. Somebody said to me earlier today about reading the Quran. And I said, reading the Quran is like reading a fortune cookie. There's no power in that. Reading the Quran is like reading uh, my journal. There's no power in that. But in the word of God, in the word of God alone, you don't see it because we don't see into the spiritual realm. We can through the Holy Spirit. But I mean, in, in the physical, we don't physically see the spiritual realm. But the word of God sees the spiritual realm. The word of God knows that when it's sent out, it's never going to return void. We're going to move into a position now to receive the word. It's worship prepares your heart for the word. And now the word is what does the work. It's the same word. In the parable of the sower, it was always the same seed. But it was the soil that was different. Let God prepare your heart to receive what's going to happen today in your life. Let the message go forward. Amen. We're going to call up the man of God and we're going to clap, not for him, but we're going to clap for the Holy Spirit in him. Amen. 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 I love you too. I love you too. I love you too. Let me pray with you. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We pray over your vessel. God, we pray over your anointed one. Thank you, Lord that he has taken on the ministries, the father of our ministry through you, like Paul and Timothy, Lord. Yes. Thank you that you've sent mentors into my life that can show me how to do what it is that you're calling me to do. Lord, bless him so that we can be blessed by him. Lord, let no clever speech come out of his mouth, Lord. Use him, Lord, for your glory, God. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Come on, celebrate Jesus in this place. Come on, celebrate Jesus. Stand on your feet and celebrate Jesus in this house. Celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords for the work that's going on in this house. Can somebody say amen? Okay, I want everybody to stand on your feet very quickly. Stand on your feet. I want to give, first of all, greetings from my lovely wife, Lydia, who was not able to come because we're going to make this one a quick uh, trip and we have three kids right now we have seven five and one year old uh, one amazing son prophet jeremiah and two amazing daughters sophia and wonderful grace and so i want to give you greetings from my family now i want to celebrate the work that's being done in this house pastor pastora you all are doing an extraordinary work. Every single time. That's what I was going to say when I came up here. I said, man, every single time I come, I see the increase. Somebody say increase. increase. No, 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 no. Somebody say increase. increase. I'm telling you, every single time I come here, I leave encouraged. 
because, you know, I come every four months, every three months, and it's just, there's an increase. And so God is doing something extraordinary. I want you all to help me celebrate the leadership of this house. Come on, clap your hands for them. And the work that's being done, God is doing it through you guys in the name of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? amen. Now, I want to consider Genesis chapter 20. I want to consider Genesis chapter 20. I want to go to verse 2. Okay. And I, and I, and I want to take this text and I, I want you to take notes. I'm here on assignment. Anytime the Lord sends me to visit one of my, my children in the faith, it's on assignment. I don't go, I don't visit my children all the time. I don't do that. I don't, I, I speak to him as the Lord leads us to connect. But when I am sent, and I tell you, I got to come and I got to see the church. I'm sent by the Spirit. I'm sent on assignment. Somebody say assignment. assignment. Now, there's an assignment on this house. That this house is going to be a lighthouse to this whole region. And it's going to bring people from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Now, watch this. This is just the seed. The people that are here are just the seed. The tree is yet to be seen. I, I'm going to repeat that. This is just the seed. This is just the seed. The tree of the seed is yet to be seen. We're still forming leaders. We're still developing the, the, the seed level of the word. The Bible says first the seed, then the blade, then after the, the, the blade, then the four corn in the blade. So it's in stages. That's, that's found in Mark chapter 4. There are stages. My son, you're only in the seed stage. This is just a C stage. No, because I, I, I envision in the spirit what's going to happen with this house. I'm seeing it in the spirit. And I, and I see a multitude. I see a multitude. Now, people that come late, people that come late, there's going to come a time that people got, come late, they're going to have to sit in, in uh, the other seats that are in the back that you're going to have to start pulling out because they're not going to fit in here. This was going to happen. And I, I, I know what I'm seeing in the spirit. Okay, somebody say amen. amen. Okay, Genesis chapter 20. Now, let me explain to you my assignment. These two days, I'm just going to be here two days, are going to be of healing and miracles. Now, my instruction from the Lord is twofold. First of all, I'm going to show you that God wants to heal you. I'm going to show you that God wants to heal you. Then number two, I am going to show you the instruments or the channels that he uses for healing. So you can be a vessel to be used. Because it's not just being healed. It's being a vessel of healing. The Bible says that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the glory may not be of man but of God. So it's the treasure inside of you that needs to be unleashed. Can you imagine when everybody here unleashes the greatness or the treasure that's inside of them and they start releasing it for the glory of God? Something extraordinary is going to happen in this city. Can somebody say amen? amen. Now, Genesis 20. I want to consider verse 2. The word of God is read in this manner. Now, Abraham said to Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. That's he's saying it now to the king. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. Okay? Somebody say sin. Now, I want to I wanna, I wanna point out that and I want to highlight the story because a lot of people do not know what happened in the story. When he took Sarah, king Abimelech, although he did not take her, thinking he was in sin, he took her in innocence. Listen to verse 3. As soon as sin steps in, as, I want you to see that. Somebody say sin. sin. As soon as sin steps in, something follows. Verse 3. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Indeed, you are a dead man. 
Indeed, you are a dead man. Because the woman you have taken, she is another man's wife. Now watch this. He took her unknowingly. Unknowing that she was the wife of another man. But still sin was an operation. And as soon as sin is an operation, death must follow. As soon as sin is an operation, death must follow. That's what he says. You are but a dead man. Verse 4. But Amimelech had not come near her, meaning he hadn't slept with her yet. But just the act of taking her into his, his, his group, into his house, just that alone activated it. And he said, Lord, Will you slay? Watch this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This word right here is a, it, it's, it's a dangerous word. Will, will you slay a righteous? Somebody say righteous. Righteous. <laughs> ah, how many are happy to be in church? Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> now, Abimelech, man, and God knew his word. He said, whoa. Wait a minute. Will you slay a righteous nation. Now, wait a minute. There's, there's so much there. I got to come back another time to give you that. Why did he say, well, you slay a righteous nation? I'm not talking to a nation. I'm talking to you. But he said, well, you slay a righteous? Because each one of us has a nation inside. So he says, well, you slay a righteous nation also. Verse 5. Did he not say to me, she is my sister? And she, he uh, even said herself, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart. Somebody say integrity. And in innocence. Somebody say innocence. Innocent. Of my hands have I done this. He's telling God, you have no ground to kill me. That's what he's saying. You have no ground. I, I did not do this knowingly. Verse 6, and God said to him in the dream, yes, I know. Yes, I know that you did it in the integrity of your heart. Now watch this. For I also withheld you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not let you touch her. I kept you. I've been keeping you. Now. If you go forward with this, you're going to die. You are but a dead man. As far as you are concerned to God, God only sees in one time the finished product. Let me repeat that. God only sees in one time zone the finished product. That's the only, that's the only way. So if you follow this path, I already see the finished product of that. You are but a dead man. Verse 14 now, verse 14. You can go back and read the story another time. Then Abimelech took sheep, oxen, male and female servants and gave them to Abraham and restored Sarah, his wife, to him. Verse 15. And Abimelech said, see, my land is before you dwell where it please you. Then to Sarah he said, behold, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. Indeed, you are vindicated. Uh, um, indeed, this vindicates you before all who are with you and before everybody that she was rebuked. Verse 17. Now listen to this. Verse 17. So Abraham prayed. Somebody say pray. To God. And God healed Abimelech. His wife. And his female servants. Then they bore children. Wait a minute. So by this time, just while he's talking to them, while God is speaking with Abimelech, he says, you are about a what? You are about a what? That man. While he's talking to him, the next day he's already in all of his household are sick. And Abraham has to pray for them to be what? They are already sick. 
They weren't sick before, but because the initiation of a sinful behavior was brought in, sickness was already creeping. And it had gone from him to his wife, his female servants. They were already sick. What was the sickness? They were already all barren. I'm trying to teach you something. They were already sick, my daughter, already. God only spoke to him the morning, the night prior. And by the next day, they were already what? They were already sick. Lift up your hands. I want to pray. Say with me. Say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, give me revelation of your word for manifestation in my environment. In the name of Jesus, I give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, somebody say aloud, amen. amen. All right, give the Lord a hand clap of praise very quickly as you be seated. Hey, I want you to take notes to what I'm going to say, and I want you to follow me closely. Okay. I want to talk to you for a couple minutes under this title. Sin will kill you, but righteousness will heal you. Sin will kill you, but righteousness will heal you. This is extremely important. Sin will kill you, but righteousness will will heal you. Now, the first thing I want you to understand is most of what the enemy is doing against us is because of lack of knowledge. I want you to follow me closely. Most of what the enemy is doing against us is because of lack of knowledge. Because the Bible says the kingdom suffered violence and the violent take it by force. So there is violence that's going to be used against the kingdom. That's biblical. And it's not the kingdom of heaven where God is. It's the kingdom of heaven here among us. Okay, so that's where the violence is being fought. The Bible says... For we fight not against flesh and blood. So there's a fight. Although God's with you, the Bible says we fight not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against rulers, against darkness. That's in Ephesians chapter 6. So there's obviously a fight. Somebody say fight. Now, what you must understand is your fight is not for Victory. Your fight is not for victory. Your fight is for enforcement. Or, how can I say this? Your fight is for willingness to yield or to stand. That's what the fight is for. I'm going to repeat that. It's not for victory. You're never fighting for victory. The Bible says we are more than overcomers. We are more than conquerors. So you're not fighting for victory. The Bible says we are more than overcomers. We have, we, we have already triumphed. We are triumphant in Christ Jesus. So it's not for victory. So what is it for? It's to see whether you will stand or whether you will yield to the pressure that's coming against you. The Bible says it this way. It says, when you have done all, what? Stand. Once you have done all, what? Stand. Having your arm on. Once you've done all, keep standing. Just don't yield. Don't give in to the pressure that's coming up against you. So it's not for victory. I, I mean, I can, I can take you to so many verses that speak about our victory. So, 
is to see whether you will stand. Now, where is this capacity to stand at? Where is this capacity to be able to, to continuously keep pressing forward? It's in your understanding. I'm going to repeat that. The ability, your healing, most of us in here, your healing is not being delayed. Watch this. Your healing is not being prepared. Your healing has already been sent before the foundations of the earth. And your healing has already been finished when Jesus died on the cross. So what's holding us back is the lack of enforcing. It's the lack of knowledge of knowing what really is yours. That's what's holding you back. And I'm, I'm gonna, this is why sin will kill you. But righteousness will heal you. Okay? Now, let me, let me deal with your mind very quickly. Somebody say my mind. My mind. Say it again. Say my mind. my mind. My son, the battle is in the mind. Okay? So I'm going to give you two verses I want to deal with just to emphasize because everyone in this church, somebody say everyone, everyone, has to see the power of God manifested in their life. The Bible says in Psalms 103, it says that the angels of God are ready to perform his word. The Bible says that we should not forget his benefits. He's a God of benefits. Where are all these benefits at? You know what, you know what Gideon said to the angel of the Lord? If God's with us, then where are the miracles? If he's with us, where are the miracles? God is waiting for somebody that will really have a transformed mind and start enforcing miracles in their life. Somebody say enforce it. Say it again. Say enforce it. Life is not about what's given to you. Life is about what you take. You say, Matthias, why do you say that? Because God already gave us everything. So it's not about what he gave you because he already gave you all things. Now it's about what you take. Somebody say, take your healing. Take say it again. Say, take your healing. Take your healing. You got to take it. You got to take it. Right now, he didn't, he didn't give them the promised land. He said to them one time, I've given you the land. Now go in. Go take it. I gave you the land. Now go take it. I gave you your healing. Now go take it. I gave you a mega church. Now go take it. I gave you a mega ministry. Now go. Now God wants you to go out and take stuff. Somebody say my mind. My mind. Must be transformed. Okay. Two verses with the mind. Two verses. Because this is where the problem is. Your healing is behind your mindset. That's what your healing is. Okay. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. That's the first verse. I'm going to deal with this one. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4, please. Very quickly. Stay with me in the back. 2 Corinthians 4 4, please. Glory to the Lamb of God. It's, okay. Is there? Okay. Whose minds? Somebody say minds. Mind. The God of this age has blinded. Who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who's in the image of God should shine on them. See, what the enemy's after is not your, he, he can't stop your inheritance. He cannot stop your healing. He cannot stop your, your, your prosperity. He cannot stop your delivery. He cannot, he cannot stop none of that. It's impossible because God sent those things. And whatever God sends, no one can stop. The Bible says the gifts of God are without Revoke, meaning they cannot be turned back. So, what is he stopping? He's stopping your mind from receiving it. If your mind is blind and you think so low of yourself, or you think so bad of yourself, or you think that you need to be sick, it's blocking it. So, it's not that it wasn't sent, it's that it wasn't received. Can somebody say amen? Now, give me 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. 
2 Corinthians 11, 3, in the same chapter, we're speaking about uh, the enemy. Notice what it says. But I fear. This is Paul speaking to the Corinthians. Let somehow, as the serpent deceive Eve, as the serpent deceive Eve by his craftiness, so your, so your, notice what the attack is. So your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity. From what? This is not hard. He calls the gospel simple from the simplicity that's in Christ. So our minds are literally stopping many of us from the simplicity. It's stopping many of us from the simple truth and the simple power that belongs to each one of us that are in here. And that's why God sent me over here because he's going to get you out of that blindness and you're going to start operating in all that belongs to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. When you said that God spoke to you in the back and you said that God don't need you to lay hands for people to be healed. Just by the simple sending of the word, people are going to be healed. I knew you were speaking from the Lord because the Lord told me, just speaking my word in that church, people are going to get up and they're going to say, you know what? This is the last time I am going to allow the devil to take what's mine. From now on, I'm going to walk in my... Somebody scream, take it. You got to take your healing tonight. Don't be waiting on the pastor. Don't be waiting on the evangelist. No, no, no. Before we lay hands on you, you're going to come up here and say, I'm already healed. I already took what is mine and... Can somebody say amen? amen? So, this is what's being attacked. Your mind. See? Now, I want to deal with two words in here. Two words. But I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceive. I want to deal with that word. Somebody say deceive. deceive. Say it again. Say deceive. deceive. That word is the same word as the word beguiled. Okay, what does that word mean? Watch this. It means charm. It means enchantment. It means calculated deception. Somebody say calculated. calculated. It's charming. You know what it is? It makes you feel, you know what, this, this is really not that bad. See, when someone is charming, they're like, you know, you're like, I, you're not that cute, but he's got some charm to him, you know. So, so, so it, it literally means that the enemy is working on you to try to charm you into accepting your sickness. He's trying to charm you into accepting your report, although it's a demonic report. He's trying to be charming in the way that he's doing it. He's not being violent about it. No, he's trying to talk to you, well, everybody has it. You know, it happens to everyone. So he's being charming about it. I wish it's not aggressive. He's being subtle. That word means sly. It means crafty. It means to calculate the way that he's talking to you so that you begin to accept it as if it's yours and not from him. But I fear that somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, he was sly about it. He was very... Let me, let, 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 let me, let me go to my notes right here real quick. He was shrewd. Watch this. He was skilled. He was artful. He was cunning. It's literally, whenever the enemy is trying to get you to accept what doesn't belong to you, what he gave you, he's being artful about it. And he's trying to give you at least six different reasons why, you know what? You should keep that because, and you should accept that because, and you shouldn't. Be, and he's being artful. He's drawing you a pet 
architecture of a lower you that God never intended for you to live in. He's, he's artful about it. He's not aggressive and trying to get you to, no. He's being artful. He's, he's literally preparing an argument in your mind that is so, it looks so good that you begin to accept it. And unless you know enough truth to go to the Bible and say, whoa, 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 this is not in here. You will not perceive it. See, you won't, you won't see it. It's going to be so crafty that until you're in it and you're in it for a long time, you won't be able to know that the devil was working on you. That's why he says, but I fear. Let somehow as the serpent deceive, he was crafty, he was artful. Eve, by his craftiness, his arts, his charming behavior, so your minds, all of this is happening against your mind. So, watch this, so your mind will accept an image of you that God never intended. You are living what you see in your mind continuously. That's what you're living. You're, you're living what your mind sees continuously. So, he's being very crafty in his behavior towards your mind. And I'm telling you today, you got to become aggressive against those imaginations. There literally have been images be that he has put together over a period of time. He has put images together and he has imprinted those images in your mind so so crafty and so artfully that you have created an image in your mind that you see of yourself and you cannot see yourself past that unless you run into somebody who's farther in the gospel and unless you know into somebody who knows the word and tells you no you're not supposed to be there you're supposed to be over here the devil will deceive you what was the image that the what was the image that the devil had played? Watch this. What was the image that the devil had played into the mind of the beggar who sat every day at the gate beautiful? The Bible says he has sat there every day at the gate beautiful, begging people arms. Now, his legs work, his mouth works, his ears works, his hands work. But the only image he sees of him is that he cannot see and that he is a beggar. And every single day, he went there to beg. Now, what happens? When Peter comes along, he comes with the image of God on the inside of him. He comes with who he knows who God made him to be. And he looks at them and everybody just looks at him and pities him and says, Oh my goodness, here you are again. You're always there at the gate. You're going to be okay. But Peter don't come with that. He says, whoa, 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 whoa. When you ask me for um, silver and gold, I don't have. I don't have silver and gold. I don't have for you what you continuously have been asking for. Because that's natural. You need to restore. You need to go back to what you really need and what really God wanted to give you. I don't have silver and gold, but what I have, I give you. He had something that was greater than money inside of him. What I have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Stop begging and stop living in that image. Somebody say, change your mind. Change your mind. Say it with authority. Say, change your mind. Change your mind. You got to change your mind. Your healing is waiting on you to say, whoa, whoa, this don't belong to me. I'm not a beggar. I'm not going to accept this report from the doctors. I don't care what you show. The word of God tells me. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Okay, write these down. Write, write these down. Write these down. Write these down. Okay, take, take these notes because I, I, I need to give you. You must become aware. Write this down, please. You must become aware of God's high opinion of you. That's number one. You got to become aware of God's 
high opinion of you. Not everybody thinks the best of you. That's all right. God thinks highly of you. You must become aware of God's high opinion of you. Write this down, number two. You must embrace your divine position of royalty. You must embrace your divine position of royalty. Number three. You must think of yourself like God does. Number four. You must speak to yourself like God speaks. And number five. You must not. Watch this. Number five. You must not accept anything lower than God's best. I am telling you right now, you cannot accept anything lower than God's what? You can, don't, don't accept it. Don't accept it. Let me give you some verses real quick. Let me give you some verses. Very, very quickly. Numbers 13, 27. I'm speaking about healing. Numbers 13, 27. Then they told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. Speaking to Moses. It truly, somebody say truly. Flows with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. It truly, if your life is not flowing in milk and honey, your Watch this. You are not enjoying what God really has for you. That word truly means very, very. It means it is of. This is really the truth. Very, very, truly, truly. Where you sent us does flow with milk and honey. You're not supposed to have, watch this, any glitch that the devil put on you accepted in your life don't accept it because that's not the land that God wants to bring you into he says then they said we went to the land where you sent us and truly it flows with milk and honey somebody say truly now why why does God's best belong to you? Why does God's best belong to you? Okay, this is why I wanted to bring you. Why does healing belong to you? Why? Because remember when I told you in Genesis 30, um, 20 when I opened up. Where there is sin, death. And sickness must follow. But where there is no sin, life and healing must follow. Say that again. Where there is sin, that's what he says, you are but a dead man. Sin has come in. Remember what God said to Adam, the day that you eat of the fruit, you shall surely you shall surely die. Where there is sin, Death and sickness must follow. But where there is righteousness, righteousness, life and healing is your only portion. Go with me to 2 Corinthians 5.21, please. 2 Corinthians 5.21. We're, gonna, we're going to um, everything that the enemy has been putting on your mind. Watch this. For he made him who knew no sin. To be sin for us. He made him Jesus who knew no sin. To be sin for you and for me. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. If there is no sin. Somebody say no sin. No sin. Say it again. Say no sin. no sin. If there is no sin. Then healing. Watch this. And Life is the only thing that you can enjoy. 
Healing in life belongs to the righteous. I'm going to show you that in the Bible. This is why the good news of the gospel is so great. Because Jesus came to remove your sin so that he can establish upon you his righteousness. Where there is righteousness, sin should not eat, destroy, kill, or steal. It cannot do it. And you say, Matthias, then why am I losing so many things? Because you're not enforcing that these things are not supposed to happen. See, you got to know, wait a minute, I'm righteous now. Somebody say, I'm righteous. I'm righteous. You're righteous now. That's the difference. You are righteous. And when you're righteous, sin cannot eat away. Not if you're righteous. Okay? Not if you're righteous. I'm going to show you now in the scriptures. Malachi chapter 4 verse 2. Malachi chapter 4. When righteousness comes in, everything changes. Malachi chapter 4. But to you. Somebody say to me. Come on. Say what I thought. Say to me. But to you who fear my name. The son of righteousness shall arise with healing. How shall the son arise over you with what? Healing in his wings. Healing in his wings. Everything connected to the righteous person is supposed to be flowing milk and honey continuously. You say, Matthias, how can this be? Because Jesus took the desert. He took the beating. He took the sin. He took the death so that you and I can avoid that type of lifestyle. <laughs> what did he say? He said, you are but a dead man. He says, whoa, Lord, will you slay a righteous nation? God knows he cannot slay a righteous nation. He can't do it. And the integrity and the innocence of my heart have I done this. And he says, you know what? I also kept you from sinning against me. I kept you. I held you back. And because he was not, watch this, because he had not yet sinned. Sin had not yet been acted upon. It was crouching at the door, but it was not acted upon. The Lord says, because you haven't done this, I haven't killed you yet. Or Death has not been allowed to come in and take you. But they were already sick. Because what's sickness? Sickness is premature death. Sickness is premature death. If you stay sick for a long time, eventually what happens? You die. Can somebody say amen? Okay, lift up both your hands. Lift them up, lift them up. Say, Lord, Lord. say what authority, say, Lord, Lord. you gave me life, life. healing Healing. through your righteousness. righteousness. In Jesus' name, name. I cannot cannot be touched, touched. I cannot cannot be moved moved. because Because I am righteous righteous. in in you, healing Life is my portion. In Jesus' name. Now say aloud, amen. amen. All right, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Quickly, quickly. Somebody say, Lord, Lord. transform my mind. Say it one more time. Say, Lord, Lord. transform my mind. I, all I want you to do is to get you to start thinking correctly about your righteous position. I need you to start thinking correctly about your righteous position. What comes, hear me, with this righteous position? Four things come with this righteous position. Write them down. Four things come with this righteous position. I'm only talking about healing, but there's four things that come with this righteous position. Number one, every good gift. What comes? 
What comes? If it's not good, then God didn't send it. Pastor, if it's not good, God did not send it. Stop trying to reason. Is God trying to teach you something? God don't need to teach you something by that. If it's not good, you can be sure. He did not send it. He don't work like that. Now, sin allowed it in or ignorance allowed it in, but God didn't send it. I'm telling you what the Bible says. Okay? Go with me to Matthew chapter 7 verse 11. Matthew 7 11 please. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts. Can you imagine what God's saying? If you being able to know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Wait a minute. If you being evil, God is trying to tell us something here. He's saying mankind, although he's evil, knows how to give good things. I'm not evil. If you who are evil know how to give good things and I'm not evil, how much more will I give you? How much more if we know people in the world, drug dealers, drug addicts, they know how to give their children a good gift. In their evil, in their sin, how much more he's saying, I'm not giving you bad things. No. I'm not, I'm not the one that gave you that headache. No. I'm not the one that gave you that diabetes. No. I'm not the one that gave you that back problem. No, no, God didn't give you that. God had nothing to do with that. Now, sin allowed it. Ignorance might have allowed it, but it wasn't God. He says, if you know how to give good gifts, how much more your father who is in heaven give good things? What kind of things? things. What kind of things? Those are the only things he asked for you. Somebody say, healing Healing. is a good thing. Say it again. Say, healing Healing. is a good thing. You're not when you are in bed written because you can, you're so sick that you can't even get out. God is not glorified. I made you for my glory, the Bible says in Isaiah. The Bible says in John chapter 15 verse 8, and this is your father glorified that you bear much fruit. And when you are struggling, God is not glorified. Every single child that struggles brings a reproach on his parents some way or another. You know what was the first thing that Saul asked, Pastor, when David killed the, the, the giant? Anybody know what was the first thing he said when he saw him? When he killed Goliath, what was the first thing he said? Whose son is he? Whose son is he? Who's his father? Because if he can do that, then his father must be dangerous. Whose son is he? Look it up. Somebody say good gifts. Number two, number two, number two. Why healing belongs to you? Why healing belongs to you? Write this down, please. Because... God gave you eternal life. What did God give you? There is nothing in eternal life that's sickly or deadly. Nothing in eternal life is sickly or deadly. It is impossible. And you're not going to get eternal life. You have eternal life. You're not going to get it. Everybody's saying, oh, I'm waiting for eternal life. You're not waiting for anything. You are waiting to end your assignment to transfer over unto the full manifestation of eternal life. But you're not waiting to get eternal life. Eternal life is inside of you now. And to the awareness. Somebody say, I got eternal life. Say it loud. I got eternal life. Now. now, you're not going 
done together. Everybody's over here, oh, when God comes to get me. I say, he already got you. You don't need him to come get you. He already got you. What you think, how you think these men of God literally had to be martyred, they had to be killed, because there was nothing taking them out. If they did not, listen, if God did not give permission for these men to be taken out, it was impossible to take them out. Impossible. We saw the demonstration in the life of John the Beloved. They put him in a pot of oil. The historian says that he, he's looking at them in the pot of oil hanging out. And after a while, they took him out. He's not burned, folks. They took him out and sent him to the island apartment. And the only conclusion is they said, get this man away from here because we don't know how to kill Somebody say eternal life. He had become eternal life conscious. What kind of consciousness do you have? Okay, go with me to the Bible. First John 5.20. 1 John 5.20, please. 1 John 5.20. And we know, watch this, that the Son of God has come and has given us in. Wait a minute. What did the devil want to take? What does he want to take? What does he want to take? He want, and the Son of God came to give us in? One wants your mind and the other one came to give you understanding. He came to give you understanding. Because once you understand, you don't need no one to lay hands on you. No, 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 Pastor, you don't got to lay hands. I already got it. Oh, God. I don't need you to lay hands. The the centurion said, I don't need you to come. Just send the word because I understand that God already gave me the healing. Somebody scream, I'm already healed. You better say it with authority. Say, I got it. Now. Now. You need to know he came to give you an understanding. Everybody's talking about, oh, what well, God's going to give me this. He's going to give me my house. Oh, he's going to give me that. Listen, that's after you get the understanding. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us in. That's the number one thing he came to give you. That's why Jesus didn't leave anybody a bank account. He didn't leave anybody a horse. He didn't leave anybody a house. He didn't leave anybody a car. He said, I don't need to leave your house, a car, a horse. With the understanding, you'll get 10 cars, 10 horses. You didn't hear what I said. You will get everything that you. Somebody say understanding. understanding. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding. Watch what you do with the understanding now. That we may know him who is true. And we are, watch this, in him who is true. In his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God. And, and you are living in eternal life right now. You're not going to live in it. You are living in it. Now, the degree of the understanding releases how much of it you enjoy. So you're not looking for eternal life. You're looking for the enjoyment of it. It's enjoying it. Pastor, I have not been sick in 16 years. You, you, you never see me sick. Watch this. In 16 years. What is that? That's enjoying. Enjoying. I have never taken a pill, none of that. In 16 years. I've been saved for 17 years. In 16 years, Pastor. Watch this. Hear me. I'm not saying it so you can clap. I'm telling you because that's what belongs to everyone in this church from this day forward if you will receive the understanding.
Somebody say, Lord, Lord open, open my understanding. My understanding. No, 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 no. Lift up both your hands quickly. Say, Lord, Lord open, open my, understanding. my understanding. Okay, go with me to the scripture very quickly. Go with me to the scripture. Go to Luke chapter 24, please. Forty-four, Luke 24, 44. I need you to see this. Because this is what is stopping us from our healing. It's the lack of understanding. It's stop looking at yourself as some kind of sickly. Well, you know, I just got it. My mom had it. My grandpa had it. So, you know, I got to get it. That's lack of understanding. That's not the truth. Notice what the Bible says. Then he said unto them, these are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you. That all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Okay, verse 20, um, 45. Next verse. And he opened. And he opened. That they might comprehend. Once your understanding is open, you don't need no one else to do nothing else. You don't need nothing else. Watch this. Verse 46. Verse 46, please. Once that understanding was open, then he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary that the Christ should suffer to rise from the dead on the third day. Verse 47, please. And that repentance of sin. And remissions of sin should be preached in his name beginning in Jerusalem. 48. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I sent the promise of my father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power. Once your understanding is open, now the only thing that's left is raw power. The only thing that's open. You know what happens, Pastor, when you start understanding stuff? You start taking, you start taking stuff off that don't fit. You say, you know what? Based on my understanding, based on what this book says, that's the last time I'm going to accept this call. From now on, I walk totally healed from this thing. In the name of Jesus. You didn't hear what I said. You start taking, you know what? Based on this book. You look at your husband and you say, honey, this is the last time I'm going to argue with you because I'm a woman of peace. I'm a man of peace. You didn't hear what I said. My understanding has been open and I'm taking it all back in the name. Can somebody say, I understand. You got to stop. Taking stuff through understanding. All of a sudden you say, whoa, 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 whoa. Based on my understanding, this don't belong here. But I but did you hear what the doctor said? It don't matter what the doctor said. I just told you, based on my understanding, this thing don't belong in. Here. Watch this. Because watch this. The, watch this. You got to get enough understanding until you start getting drunk on the word of God. You know when someone is drunk, they start talking the fool. Watch this. I, this thing got in me. So I'm in DR in the heat of COVID. I'm in DR in the heat of COVID with a team of about 20 people. Now, we're doing it in 2021 when the heat of COVID. You know how we used to fly on the plane? We will fly on the plane. Each one get a roll. You didn't hear Everybody get a roll because there's no one flying. That's when I was doing the 12, 10 crusades every month. Everybody, we're going on the plane. There's no one flying there. You get that roll. I get this roll. And we're all laying out. When I get to DR, you know, in that time, you had to be checked to go in and you had to be checked to get out. When we go out, 
The whole team gets checked. Everybody gets checked. We just, they're doing the little thing, the swab, all of this and that. Everybody's fine. When it gets to me, the guy says, you can't leave today. Now, our flight is at 12. He said, you can't leave today. I said, why not? He said, you got COVID. I looked at him like he was crazy. I said, this is what I said to the doctor. I said, before I can get COVID, your machine is messed up. The guy looked at me like I lost my mind. He said, sir, you must not hear what I said. You have COVID and you cannot leave the country in 14 days. I looked at him again and I said, that's impossible because COVID works in the bloodstream and I got the blood of Jesus. And you didn't hear what I said. I said, that's impossible. I'm talking about being drunk. Somebody say drunk. You got to be drunk on the word. So I said to him, I said to the team, I said, this, this machine is messed up. That's what I said to the team. I said, this machine is messed up and saying I got COVID. Watch this. Everybody, our flight is in the next three hours. I want everybody to board a plane. I want you to go home. We finished the assignment. It is well. Next month, I have another crusade in Puerto Plata. I know what's happening. I'm supposed to be here. Go and get that crusade organized. So when next month, when the next team comes in, we're going to just flow right into it. So I said to him, it's Friday. I said, I'm going to go tomorrow. I mean, it's Sunday. I'm going to go tomorrow on Monday and I'm going to organize that crusade in Puerto Plata and I'm going to come back on Tuesday here and I'm going to leave this country. The team is so concerned. Oh, Matias, you're staying behind. I said, no, 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 no. You don't understand. I'm going to go set up the crusade. I want you to go home and I'm going to be back on Tuesday. So I called my wife. I said, sweetheart, this machine is messed up. It's telling that I got COVID. You didn't hear what I said. Somebody say, don't change your confession. No, no, no. Somebody say, don't change your, don't change your confession. I'm talking about understanding. Somebody say understanding. So I go to Puerto Plata the next day. I told my mom, I went to Puerto Plata. They took me over there. I got my driver. I said, this is the place that we're going to do it. I set up the equipment. I set up everything. I said, we're coming back next month. I want you to put everything in place. The guy says to me, Matias, I thought you were leaving yesterday. I said, I know, but the Lord gave me an extra day. So I'm here. Now notice, I never said I got COVID, not once. I said, I said, I'm here, I'm here to set this up. So we set everything up. I go back on Tuesday. Can you imagine the doctor when he saw me? The doctor saw me and said, oh my goodness. He said, you're back. I said, I, I, I said, you're right. I'm back. I said, I want you to do every test that you know that you can do. Do the bloodstream, do the swab, and I want you to give me my, my, uh, my paperwork. So that I can go home. I'm ready to go home today. So the guy looks at me like he said, man, this guy lost his mind. So he does exactly that. He checks me out. He does the swab. He does the same thing he did before. Two days ago, it comes back. He says, I can't believe it. He said, I cannot believe it. He said, what happened? He said, it's negative. I said, I told you that machine was messed up. <laughs> Pastor, this happened. Because once you have the understanding, somebody say, you take it. Take it. Say it again. Say, you take it. Take you got to take things by force. How you got to take it by? How you got to take it by? You got to take them by force. I never accepted. You know how many people we brought during COVID, Pastor? To the Dominican Republic? 315. In and out of the country, during that time, we did 18 crusades, one after another, in the heat of COVID, Patora, in the heat. I will tell the team, we're going to be totally fine. Matias, nobody, I said, we're going to be totally fine. I took 315 during the heart of COVID, and we were totally fine. Somebody say, totally fine. Totally fine. Say it again, say, totally fine. Now you have to know what's been given to you. Somebody say eternal life. Number three. Number three. Number three. What's been given to you? Watch this. The Holy Spirit has been given to you. Wait a minute. What has been given to you? Wait a minute. What has been given to you? The Holy Spirit has been given to you. Go to Luke chapter 5, verse 17, please. Luke chapter 5, verse 17. Now, you got all good gifts. 
You have eternal life, but you also have the Holy Spirit. Now, it happened on a certain day that he was teaching and that there were Pharisees and, and teachers of the Lord sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem in the power. Somebody say the power. The power. Of the Lord was present. What was it? Present. What was it? Present. To? What was the power present for? To? If the power is present, then everything around them must get what? Everything around them must get what? Yeah. And the power was present to heal. Go with me to John chapter 20, verse 21, please. John chapter 20, verse 21, please. I want you to show up. You got the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is present, he's present to heal. Then, so Jesus said unto them again, Peace to you as my Father has sent me. Everybody say this. As my Father has sent me. Again, as my Father has sent me. Again, as my Father has sent me. Can you see Jesus <coughs> coughing and <coughs> my back hurt? Could you imagine Jesus doing that? Think. Could you imagine him saying, you know what, I can't get out of bed today because you know what, all my bones are back. Could you imagine? Could you imagine him saying, you know what, no, I got, this disease is killing me, right, right, my stomach is killing me. Could you imagine? You can't imagine a Jesus like that because that's not the portion of one that's connected to God. That's why you can't imagine Jesus like that. But he says, as my father has sent me, I also sent you. Can you imagine Jesus saying, you know what, my throat is killing me today, I can't preach? Can you imagine that? Then he says, verse 22, give me verse 22, so you can see. And when he has said this, he breathed on them and said, what? The way that you act like me is because you have the same spirit I got. Receive the Holy Spirit. Don't accept any foolishness. Do not accept any report from the enemy. Do not accept what the enemy has said about your ancestry. It don't matter if your grandma had it. It don't matter if your mother had it. It don't matter who connected in your block had it. It don't matter. You were sent like Jesus was sent. Receive the holy. You got to get mad at the enemy. You got to say, I am not going to accept this because I have understanding. This does not belong to me. It does not belong in my house. It does not belong in my lineage. I got all good gifts. I got eternal life. And I have the Holy Spirit. Number four, as I get ready to close. Number four, as I get ready to close. Somebody say good gifts. Good say it with authority. Say good gifts. Good gift. Somebody say eternal life. Good Somebody say the Holy, Spirit. the Holy Spirit. Number four. Number four. Number four. Number four. Write this down. What happens when you're righteous? What comes when you're righteous? Wait, wait a minute. Because all of this is connected to your healing. I want you to see that everything has been given to you. Come on, get the musicians up there. Let's get ready to go. Everything has been given to you. Okay? Number four. Number four. I want you to hear me, please. I want you to hear me very carefully. Number four. You know why you got to be healed in its totality? Pastor, you know why you cannot accept a single thing that's not of God in your life? You know why? Because apart from giving you good gifts, apart from giving you eternal life, apart from giving you the Holy Spirit, you have been given the Son of God. What have you been given? What have you been given? What have you been given? You have been given the Son of God. I want you to think about that. Romans. Go to Romans very quickly, please. Romans. Chapter 8, verse 32. Romans 8, 32. Romans 8, 32. I want everybody to read this with me. 
Every single person in here. I want you to see this. I want you to make this your anthem. I don't accept. Hear me, son. I don't accept anything that's not of God based on this verse. Pastor, I don't accept anything that's not the best based on this verse right here. Everybody read it with me. One, two, three. He who did not spare his own son, but deliver him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us? How many things are you supposed to get? How many things are you supposed to get? He who did not spare his own son. If he gave you the son, what's healing then? That's small talk. He gave you the son. What's bigger? Casting out cancer out of your body or giving you the son of God? If he gave you the son, then what's casting out the cancer? That's nothing. He already gave you something much bigger. If he gave you the son, then everything else is small after that. He who did not spare his own son. He did not spare the son for you and for me to be totally healed. Somebody say, with the Son comes everything. Say it again. Say, with the Son comes everything. I want everybody here to stand on your feet. This is, this is I am on assignment. I came to, I came to wake up your understanding. Watch this. Stop speaking over yourself things that God never said. We say some things over ourselves that God never said. We say some things that God never said. You're here tonight and you're saying, Matthias, I've spoken some things and I've accepted some reports that I realized God never said that about me. Listen to me. The doctor didn't mean for this. To hamper or to stop your faith. He's just telling you what he sees by facts. We don't live by facts, folks. We live by truth. We live by truth. That's what the Bible says. And when Jesus had opened their understanding. You're here today. When I pray, I want you to understand. All you have to do is receive what is yours and be aggressive about it. My daughter, I never accepted till this day. Never. You can ask my wife that I was going to get COVID. Never. I just, I just said it's impossible. That's what I said. I will hug everybody. I, will, I never use the mask. And never. I'm, I'm just telling you, that's just one example of many. But I will not change my confession. And people will tell me all types of stuff. Matthias, you got to stop being so reckless and all this. Because people, cause people will, will talk. He, they'll talk you out of faith. Matthias, you, got, you too radical about this. You know, you got to be cautious. and Because watch this. They don't know they're talking you out of faith. I refuse to accept it. Watch this. I never did. I never did. It did not stop me from doing one single thing. Not once. We, we did more during COVID than you can fathom. Than you can fathom. We saw in, in COVID over 55,000 people come to Christ. In COVID. 55,000 people come to Christ. Uh-uh. 
I'm going to do two things. The first thing is, I want you to put your hand on your heart. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. L let me say this. If you're serious, because I don't want nobody to feel forced, that you're going to walk by the understanding of the word. I don't want to force anybody that says, well, you know, I need my Advil. And now, you know, I, you know I, that's, that's just how I function. But you're saying, Matthias, I want to operate by the understanding of the word. I want to operate by what God said. If that's you, I want you to put your hand on your heart. If you're serious, because this is by, based on, on, on levels of faith. I want you to repeat this prayer when we say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I receive correction from your word. What you said and what you think and what you do is the only thing that I will receive and I will emulate in my life. In the name of Jesus, I will think like you. I will speak like you. I will walk like you. And I will not accept anything outside of that. In Jesus' name. By your stripes, I'm healed. I'm restored. Right now, I'm established. Right now, I'm edified. In the name of Jesus, I receive it in Jesus' name. Now say it loud, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise quickly. Give it to him. Right there where you at, put your hand on your heart now, and we're gonna we're gonna give God, we're gonna give God our offering. We're gonna give God our offering. Now hear me. I'm here. This offering that I'm gonna take up. I want to bless this church. This church for me is a miracle. I met this man more than, it's been at least 10 years since the first time we met, a decade ago. And I remember speaking over him prophetically that he was going to do great things here in the city. But I cannot tell you that I fully could see the magnitude of what was going to get started through him and through his lovely wife. The offering I'm going to lift up today, I want to bless this house so that the transitions that are coming, the blessings that are coming, the growth that is coming will take place and there will be enough provision to make it happen smoothly in the name of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? amen. Okay, so I want, to, I want us to give and I want us to give with joy. This is the house which you guys are served at. This is the house where you guys are fed. This is the house where you guys are blessed. I want you to do it with joy. And I want you to do it with grace. Do we have the methods of giving for this house? If they could be put on the screen. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless every single cheerful giver that's in this house. Father, I magnify your name for what you're doing. The grace that's on this house is evident. It's beautiful. It's powerful. Bless this place. Bless it abundantly in the name of Jesus. And everybody says, Amen. you can bring your offering or you can give online, please, for this house. You can do that now. You can do that now. Just bless it. Come on, let's bless this house that's obviously operating.